Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your we gather rejoicing. This is our last Sunday of the year. We celebrate Christ who is King. King of our lives, King of the universe, King of all that we know, all that we are. We haven't always acknowledged this kingship. We haven't always accepted the leadership and guidance of the Lord. So we ask for forgiveness. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather all the nations of the world for the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things and your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that all of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. We ask this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you that led out and brought in Israel. And the Lord said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron, before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, and now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's witness it is to praise the name of the Lord. There were set the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, we give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the rulers scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingly power. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Where do we look for leadership today? Maybe we look for it in the Houses of Parliament or in the union buildings. Maybe we look for it in corporate offices or in the offices of NGOs. We look for leadership in these places and in many more. We want good leadership. But if we can't have good leadership, we will settle for bad leadership. Today is the final Sunday of the year. This day has another name, Christ the King. Today, before the church year ends, we recognize the kingship of Jesus. We look not only to Christ who reigns forever in heaven, we also look to Christ who was king at Calvary. In Christ crucified, in Christ our king, we find the very best model of leadership. In Luke's version of the Passion story, Jesus speaks three times from the cross. First, he speaks to his father about the people who put him there. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Second, 
He promises paradise to the thief who acknowledges him as king. And then with his very last breath, he places himself into his father's hands. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We look to the cross for leadership. We are not disappointed. These three brief sentences from Jesus constitute a, a lesson in leadership which is all too rare. They constitute an example worthy of a king, and yet lessons that anybody can follow. And so we consider each sentence in turn. Justice is miscarried. Jesus is beaten and condemned. He's taken to a place of execution. His hands and feet are nailed to wood. The cross is raised. And he is left to die an excruciating death, a death of shame for all the world. Under similar circumstances, some people lash out in defiance. Others are paralyzed, broken by their torture. Jesus chooses a different route, a regal one, one which shows that the cross is not a trap, but a throne. He forgives those who are mocking him, shaming him, killing him. They condemn him by word and action, and he prays for them. Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they're doing. He excuses their ignorance, their hardness of heart, their thirst for blood, the moral blindness which allows them to put to death the author of life. Why does he do this? Maybe it's because he sees them for who they truly are. Not powerful people, but people who are weak, ignorant, blind, and fearful. In the midst of his execution, he realizes how truly miserable their circumstances are. And at the same time, he declares them redeemable. God can forgive them. God can open their eyes. God can start them on a different road. Now, there is leadership in this, because leadership means, even in that darkest moment, seeing past how things appear and recognizing how they can be. Now, the cross of Jesus stands between two criminals. One of them rails against Jesus. He demands that he saves them. But the other criminal rebukes that first, recognizing that Jesus is innocent. This criminal, and tradition gives him a name, Dismas, even sees his crucified neighbor as king. As he is near to death, he makes this bold request. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responds, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus is a leader. He is not a bureaucrat. He sets no obstacles in the way of someone who has so little time. What he does is seize an opportunity. Other opportunities would require different strategies. But the vultures are soaking Calvary, and soon both Dismas and Jesus will be dead. What motivates Dismas, we don't know. And Jesus does not ask. He's willing to take this criminal at his word and to meet him again on the other side in paradise. There's leadership in this, because leadership means being willing to risk to seize an opportunity when the time is right, and to believe that people are better than their failures. Jesus only gets out one more sentence before he dies on the cross and ends up as dead as anybody else in 
Jerusalem's morgue. He dies having just uttered a prayer, a prayer that sums up his life and begins to make sense of his death. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Here, Jesus is quoting a verse from Psalm 31, and it goes on to say, For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. And so this prayer of Jesus is not one of desperation. It's not a clinging to God just in case God exists. This prayer is a declaration of faith, even a shout of triumph. Jesus has done what he came to do. Now it's time for him to go home. The world of the passion story is a world of cruelty and chaos. Dignity and life are priced very cheap. There is no justice, no true justice to be held from human courts or authority. But in this chaotic, cruel world, Jesus remains steady. He walks the course that is his, from the crowd's adulation on Palm Sunday to the scorn he encounters on Calvary. Jesus remains steady, the true king, because he knows his own center, the father who dwells in majesty. Jesus knows that not only he, but the entire world is somehow in the Father's hands. And here is the leadership, because leadership means a commitment to something greater than yourself, something which is not only yours, but the center of every person and every place, the one that Jesus prays to as Father. There's lots of leadership in the world. Some of it is toxic. Some of it just maintains things as they are. But some of it changes the world for the better. What we learn from the cross is simple, continually challenging us, and it is of immense importance. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Leadership means even the darkest moments, seeing past how things are and recognizing how they can be. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Well, leadership means the willingness to risk, to seize an opportunity when the time is right, and to believe that people are better than their failures. Finally, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Leadership means commitment to the center, which is not only yours, but the center of every person and every place, the one that Jesus calls Father. We now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In union with Christ our King, let us ask God to hear and answer our prayers. That the members of Christ's body will become like their head in his suffering, 
and in his glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will become like the son of David in his humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are poured out in anguish, especially those living with HIV and AIDS, will become like God's suffering servant in his fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are captives to self-love will become like the crucified Lord in his love for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will become like their risen Saviour in his triumph over death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis for all children who are suffering, especially those who are homeless, orphans, and victims of war. May they be guaranteed access to education and the opportunity to experience family affection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you will to reconcile all things in your beloved Son, the King and center of our hearts. Help us to live the truth of his kingship so that we may share the lot to the saints in light. Accompany us on the way to your house and at journey's end, give us everlasting joy in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be the meaning of this water and wine, we come to share into the community of Christ, humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Be Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for all God's church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you. We humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless victim to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, 
with thrones and dominions. With all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source of all that is good and holy in the world. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with Butitlachale, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. We share with one another a sign of peace. 
Lamb of God. We take away from the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away from the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away from the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Having received the fruit of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with Him eternally in His heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace and give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.